Uh, Tony, I've got a sandy baka for you with the polenta and the sauce by Manu Diane. I love Italian food, but what's better than Italian food? Italian food with French sauce. So the meaning of saltimbocca is the lip to the mouth, which we're using a veal, which is uh, a leg steak who's been flattened, right in prosciutto with a little bit of sage, fried up, and we're gonna serve some nice polenta. So polenta, instant polenta, which you can find everywhere in a supermarket. When I'm talking about instant, it just cooks in about 10 minutes versus the polenta that you need to stir in for 45. We've got instant. So I'm gonna put the mint kiln to boil while I'm doing the rest of the recipe. Obviously, keep an eye on the milk because if it just goes over, it's not gonna look good. But there's a little trick that my grandmother told me, my uh, Italian grandmother, okay. is if you put the wooden spoon over the top of your pot where the milk is, while the milk starts boiling over and goes all the way to the top and touches the wooden spoon, the milk goes back down. Let's see if that works, shall we? Anyway, salt in bocca. We've got beautiful pieces of veal steak. All you have to do is go to your butcher, tell them what you want to do with the veal, and they will help you with those beautiful leg steaks. So you won't have to even do anything about it. A little bit of olive oil, excuse the fingers, they're clean. We're gonna then hit them with a bit of salt. pepper and we're gonna do that on the other side as well and yes yeah, so we the salting bucket is basically a little po pocket of veal and sandwich into prosciutto and then we're gonna fry it on the saltiness of the prosciutto the crispiness of the texture beautiful so here's the prosciutto I'm gonna fold the veal in half put, place it on the prosciutto and fold the prosciutto over Voila. So as you've seen, little prosciutto wrapped around the veal pocket. And then we've got some sedge. We've used sedge before and I've talked about sedge so many times, but I really enjoy sedge. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful herb. Very fragrant. I'm just gonna apply a couple of leaves on each of the saltimbocca. Obviously some leaves are smaller or bigger than others like everything, you know. The reason why we're putting the sedge on top of the veal is when we're gonna fry uh, the veal in the pan with butter, that sedge is gonna start to crisp and then send the whole dish. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, toothpick, the sedge. Oop, oop, the milk, the milk, the milk, the milk, the milk. Look at the milk, look at the milk. Uh, but it's, it's not working, Grandma. Grandma, Grandma, I'd like to tell Grandma, your little trick doesn't work. I knew the milk was coming up. I had my eyes on it, but I wanted to prove you wrong. Have we got, so have we got another pan that side, please? Grandma, Grandma, Grandma. I think that's fun, is it? So have that in the video. So that tip was from my Italian grandmother, not my French one, obviously. She would have not done that to me. Uh, anyway, uh, take two. I clean the stove, clean the pot, and we start again. We've got milk boiling. We've got polenta. Instant polenta goes straight in. So you stir, and then you pull your polenta in. And then keep your eye on this, grandma. So now we're doing two things at once, if you can do that. And I'm, I know a woman can, men can't, but I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm gonna add a bit of salt to this polenta and a bit of pepper. Okay, you need to bring that polenta to boil, reduce the heat, and then cook it slowly for 10 to 15 minutes. 
That's what you need on an instant polenta. Okay, what I'm looking for here is for the butter to turn to foam. And from foam is gonna start turning what we call noisette. Noisette is a um, hazelnut color and quite nutty in flavor as well. And that polenta, look at that. It's pretty much uh, halfway there already. All right, just keep an eye on it. There we go. We're going first with the sage side down. Can you hear that? That's what you want to hear. You want to hear the sizzle. You want to hear the cooking. If it's not sizzling or cooking, then here we go. Oh, we've got to invent sm smelly vision because the smell of the sage hitting the butter. Oh, oh, oh. I'll tell you what, my friend. Because the veal is cut so thin, even though it's been folded in half again, it does cook quickly. Look at this caramelization. That is absolutely what you want. It's gorgeous. The butter smells so good. And what you need to do is just base this beautiful caramelized butter on top of your serving boca. Look at this. Gorgeous. I'm gonna rest it onto this plate. We've talked about fat, we've talked about bits and pieces that sticks in a pan. And I, I can't find myself to put this in a bin. And we're gonna uh, serve this something boca with polenta, but also I've got some beautiful green beans and broccolini. And I think this butter that's been flavored with the something boca and the sage needs to be saved. In the meantime, we're gonna use the Dian sauce by Manu and put it in into the pan where I cook the Sensi Boca. And it's pretty much already boiling because the pot, the pan was already hot. So what I wanna do now is I wanna bring the veal back into the sauce. And these juices that's on the plate resting, please do not waste it. Voila. Now that I've got the butter and the sage that I've cooked the sunting butter into, and I'm gonna add some more butter into it, just a little bit. Don't be shy. Now the polenta is pretty much ready. So into this polenta, I'm gonna add butter to it. You know, butter, we love butter. It's gonna make it nice and rich and soft and delicious. So polenta can be quite plain. I was gonna say boring, but I'm gonna use the word plain. So you need to give it some love. Cooking in milk is a good start. Adding butter, it's brilliant. But finishing it with parmesan is the key. And then you've got to taste it to make sure that it's seasoned properly. And that's what we call a wet polenta versus a set polenta. I could be Italian. I'm gonna throw in the green beans and the broccolini that have been pre-blanched and just saute in the butter and just to really add another little ingredient to make it somewhat special, some flat onions. Look at this. It's now time for plating. Polenta, green, santiboca, sauce. Polenta, polenta, green, green, santiboca, santiboca, sauce. Polenta, polenta, santiboca, santiboca, green, 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 green sauce. Ready to plate? As I said, don't forget to take out the little toothpick, otherwise, ouch. Look at this. That's why we call soft polenta. This is the set polenta. Creamy, delicious, full of butter and parmesan, as the Americans say. Parmesan. Parmesan. A little bit of the green, because you have to do a little bit of the green for health purposes, apparently. Don't worry, chef, I'm gonna turn it for you. Just for the cameraman. 
Since Boca. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, mom. Now imagine grabbing a fork and a knife, a bit of polenta, a bit of central boca with a bit of sauce. Mm. I think it's going to be absolutely delicious or absolutely gorgeous or absolutely yum. Bon appétit. <laughs> <laughs>